And so I think that, you know, if you think about this idea of racial scripts, this is probably one of the reasons why racially ambiguous people really kind of throw people off. And people always have to ask, what are you? What are you? And I think that, you know, personally, I think it's because it makes people really uncomfortable. Because it's almost like they have to know what your race is in order to know how to interact with you. And so if there's really one message that I hope you'll take away from this workshop, it's that identifying as mixed is not a cop out. I think a lot of people think that it's a way for people to try and have it both ways, to sort of hedge their bets, like they can't make up their mind which side they're on. But as you'll see in the course of this workshop, that's really not the case. Mixed people are naive about racism. I think that this is uh, another myth that is sometimes not overtly said, but is sort of implied. And a lot of people seem to believe that by identifying as mixed as opposed to just Asian or mixed as opposed to just black, it's really a, an act of naivete on the part of mixed people, as if they think that they are going to escape racism by just calling themselves something else. And the truth is that mixed people actually sometimes have a much more nuanced understanding of racism than people probably give them credit for. Because I think a lot of people of color, the kind of racism that they experience is probably just outright racism, where someone actually says something racist directly at you. However, with mixed people, especially if they're very ambiguous looking or if they look like something they're not, they're often, we're often put in a position of hearing things that were not meant for our ears. And this is what I call the racial spy experience. And uh, so to give you an example, a friend of mine is mixed uh, Asian and white, and she uh, became really friendly with this woman at her gym. And so she was talking, and the woman is Latina, and that matters for the story. Um, so she was talking to this woman one day, and she was just, you know, how's everything going? And the woman said, oh, you know, things are great. Um, the only thing is I'm thinking of maybe going to work out at a different gym. And so my friend said, oh, uh, why is that? Uh, or which one? And she said, oh, I'm thinking of going to join the YMCA in Flushing, Queens. And for those of you who are not from New York, Flushing is, a very, is an area that is, has very large Asian American community. And so my friend said, oh, that's great. You know, I heard that they have a big pool. It should be a really cool gym. And so the woman said, yeah, you know, but there's just one problem. And so my friend said, what? And she said, well, there's a lot of these around. And so clearly, this woman was not aware that my friend was Asian, probably assumed that she was Latina as well. But you know, that's just the one example of the kinds of things that I think a lot of mixed people hear all the time. So you know, we're often put in this racial spy kind of uh, situation. And so you know, but it really just goes to show that you know, literally, uh, mixed people have often not had the choice to self-identify as what they actually are. And it wasn't actually until the 2000 census that for the first time Americans were allowed to check off more than one race. Before that, you had to pick just one single box. And so it's not so much that people are confused, it's that they really haven't had the choice to identify as mixed. And finally, I think one of the most pervasive myths of all is that mixed people are going to solve racism just by existing. And how many times have you heard people say things like, oh, you know, oh, you're mixed? Oh, that's great, you know? You know, I, soon one day we'll all keep mixing and there will be no more race and there will be no more racism. Now, even leaving aside the fact that obviously there will always be people who are not going to date or marry or procreate outside of their race, you know, even leaving that aside for a minute, this theory pretty much makes the assumption that mixed race people themselves cannot be racist and that interracial couples themselves cannot be racist. And of course, this isn't true. Um, I can speak personally. I know a lot of mixed people who are very racist. I know a lot of interracial couples where there are some very problematic racial dynamics there. Um, and I think that when people say stuff like this, it's almost a, a way of being able to sit back on their laurels and say, well, the whole racism problem is going away by itself anyway. So there's nothing that I really need to do about it because all these wonderful mixed people and all these wonderful interracial couples are going to take care of it just by existing and just by having sex and making babies. Um, this is all going to go away. And you know, a lot of parents especially uh, talk about their kids in this way. I know a lot of parents who are interracial couples who talk about their children and say that their children are going to be bridges between cultures. And that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid. Um, if I was a kid, I would not want to be a bridge. I would just want to be myself. 
And so I definitely encourage you to resist this utopian view of mixed race people and interracial relationships because uh, racism is not going away anytime soon and uh, we really need to do something about it.